lovelies. Mina here. Welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. Either way, it's good to see you. I know the energy levels are just not, they're not peak because it's still flipping February. Yay. <laughs> So what we're going to do today within that theme is some thrift flips <laughs> because why not? I have some clothes that I don't love and I want to try and give them new life. And I thought that if I share that here, maybe I can inspire you to take a new look at your old clothes and see if there are things that you can do to freshen up some things that you used to love, maybe still kind of like, they still fit, but you're kind of tired of them. Rather than toss them and get something new, maybe you can take what you used to love and turn it into something that you can love again. Maybe what I'm going to attempt won't work out at all and will be a cautionary tale. We shall see. <laughs> okay, let's jump into it and find out what we're flipping and how we're going to flip it and whether it works. <laughs> Yay! This is a contender for thrift flip for two reasons. Uh, originally, I was going to justify this because by flipping it, I will potentially keep it out of thrift stores. If I can give this a new look that will excite me to wear it, then it can stay in my closet and it will potentially end up in a landfill. But then I also realized that I bought this from a thrift store originally. So it's a thrift double flip <laughs> or a double thrift. I don't know. Either way, I'm going to change it. I don't like what it looks like right now. As you can see, I look naked <laughs> and that's the problem. This is not, not a good color. It blends in too much with my skin tone. Otherwise, it's a good length. It still fits really nice. On the tag, it's listed as being 100% cotton. I have my doubts, but okay. Um, I didn't find it particularly warm when I would wear it. So maybe it is breathable. I don't know, it is soft though. And the sleeves are really why I bought this. I thought the sleeves were super cute on the picture. Uh, it looked a lot more pink <laughs> than it turned out in real life. And it really hasn't faded from wash. It's essentially the same color that it was when it arrived. So yeah, anyway, as I was saying, the sleeves are the reason that I bought this because I thought they looked really cute. And they are really cute in theory, just not so much in practice. They're too tight and I don't like exactly where it sits. Like, it, I mean, it looks cute. The bottom of the sleeve hits at the elbow. That looks good. But because it's tighter just a little bit above, it feels weird. And it makes me want to pull it down so that the, the tightness hits me at the elbow. But this isn't where the sleeve wants to lay, so it keeps going up, and I keep pulling it down, and it keeps going up, and I keep pulling it down. I just, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't. <laughs> and also, if I get closer, I don't know if you can see. But at each of these little gathers, a hole has worn through both sides, every single gather, the sleeves got to go. Now, in terms of sleeves, these pajama pants, they are 99% cotton. They have a tiny percentage of metallic thread. These are pajama pants that were gifted to me from my bestie. Uh, the only issue I have with them is the butt's already wearing kind of thin. So I was thinking that these would be a good contender for sleeves because then I could just like cut the legs off the pants and I don't have to do anything with the butt. I can just ignore the fact that it's wearing thin and the sleeves will become, or the pant legs will become sleeves. My only issue with that is 
they have like traditional just a regular hemmed bottom so I would need to do something because I'd really like to have ideally I'd really like to have like a stretchy so I guess I could maybe reuse this part of the cuff at the bottom hmm that's a possibility I also have another idea percolating in the old noodle but I will share that one later because I, I don't know I don't know what's going to happen with what I have before I start pulling in other stuff. So we're going to, we're going to start with this right now. Okay. So these are going to be the sleeves once these come off, but before I take these off, I'm going to dye this whole thing. But before I dye this whole thing, there are two things that are going to be dyed the same color. And I'm going to show you the other piece, my bathrobe. I had a love hate relationship for quite a while with this thing because <laughs> um, it's white. And I have gotten to the point with this particular robe that it's, you can probably see it from there. It's getting dingy. Like I pretty much only wear this thing when I'm clean. I, I put it on and use it as my towel when I get out of the bath or the shower or whatever. But like just wiping my face and my body and that's already clean. It's still, ick things are starting to get kind of dingy and yellow and oh yeah and when i dye my hair it tends to yeah stain the bathrobe as well so it's looking kind of gross but the nice thing is if you caught that on the tag this is 100 percent cotton so at first i was thinking uh, I'm gonna have to get rid of this robe and find a new one, but I want one that's in like a darker color so that you don't see the dinginess, you don't see the hair dye stains. But trying to find a decent, like everybody, at least where I am, any of the robes that are available, and there's very few that are available, they all seem to be like that micro fleece or polar fleece or like super fluffy. I don't want super fluffy. This isn't something that I wear when I want to stay warm. This is some, this is my, my wearable towel. I want it to be absorbent. Could not find anything like that. So I was getting really frustrated. According to Google, the absorbency of towel like materials isn't compromised when you dye it. If the fabric is hundred percent cotton, this is hundred percent cotton. And since this was bound for I don't even know. I don't care where it would go once it was out of this house. Anyway, um, most likely landfill. I figured, you know what? I've got nothing to lose because if I end up wrecking this, I'm going to have to find something. But if I don't attempt anything, I'm going to have to find something because I just can't. This I feel dirty when I wear this, which is just not a nice feeling when you're all like freshly clean out of the shower. And then you put this on and you're like, Nyeh. and if I can fix this, and continue its life even better. I've already had this robe for like 17 years and it still fits and it's still absorbent and I still love it. So yeah, if there's even a shred of hope that I can make this look not so icky and keep using it, awesome. So this is gonna go in the dye bath with, well, not at the same time, but it's gonna go in the same color as the sweatshirt dress and that color is drum roll please if you've been around the block aka this channel for any length of time you already know what's coming purple <laughs> yeah i like purple so that's my plan i'm gonna try i got the all-purpose dye so it will work on cotton and more so hopefully i know if it's good for cotton it's gonna be good for the robe and this says it's cotton but if there's a chance it isn't this could still work so fingers crossed I'm gonna to have to do a little research because it's been a while since I've dyed anything okay this is <laughs> this is the next day clearly new outfit had to do some research and then some stuff came up and I haven't been able to um, go ahead with the dyeing but we're gonna do it today I'm gonna to use the washing machine because the bottle and the Rit Dye website and the Rit Dye <laughs> YouTube 
uh, they all make it sound like it's really easy and it's something that, you know, can and should be done. And the robe is really, really big and I don't have, like, a vessel big enough. My dye pot is, um, too small. So, I'm gonna try the washing machine. I already put the sweater and the robe in the machine on a rinse cycle so that they're nice and damp because you need it to be like pre-wet. Okay, then I'm gonna turn the machine on. I've got it on the hottest setting that's like for clothes, not for cleaning. So I hope that's right. Then I'm gonna shake my bottle. It says to mix well. This is going into the soap dispenser, putting the entire bottle in because the robe is quite big and fluffy. And that's what was recommended for like towels and stuff. And it says to put hot water in as well. I'm putting the hot water in the dye bottle first to make sure that I rinse it out and get as much hot water or as much of the dye into the machine as possible. Okay, so there's all the dye. I hope this is right and it doesn't completely flood the machine or anything. All right, that's started. So I'm gonna let it go and now I'm gonna go upstairs and prepare some salt. Apparently I need to dissolve some salt in hot water to put in there in about 10 minutes. So I'm gonna get that ready and yeah, that'll be the next step. Let's hope this works. It's done! That dyed really well. Oh, that is a much nicer color. I don't know if it's dark enough though. It is lighter than I expect, although I think it's a similar purple. So I think that would still look nice. And it would have a nice contrast. That's messier than I expected. I'm starting to have regrets. I don't think this is going to be as fast as I had hoped because <laughs> uh, I'm going to need to clean this up before I sew the sleeve back on. The way I cut the sleeves out of the pants is I took the pant leg off at the crotch and then I laid it out and put the sleeve opening from the dress on top of the pant leg. Where it would fit the whole opening, including the neckline. And then I used my tailor's chalk to draw the shape of that opening and then used my scissors to cut it out so that the shape of the sleeve will match the shape of the sleeve opening. Okay. I didn't film any of this, but the sleeves are on and basically I just put the two ends together, sewed them and then folded the ends down and top stitched with a zigzag at the very end just to make the seam lay nice and flat, but also to hopefully cut down on the amount of fraying that might happen. And I coordinated the th thread, so it's got this nice purple zigzag on the right side, which I think looks quite nice. Sewing the sleeve to the collar was a little more difficult, but I did it. <laughs> Same thing, basically. Only with this one, I did it in reverse to the rest of like the body of the sleeve. I put the two ends together and zigzagged them first and then folded the ends down and top stitched that down more so to hold it in place so that the neckline lays nice and comfortably flat. I hope it doesn't fray, but yeah, <laughs> as I was Figuring all this out, I've noticed that, like, I've got some wear 
along the neckline here and I found some tiny little holes in what are now the sleeves. Then what I did after I got the sleeves attached is I decided I wanted cuffs and I originally was going to harvest cuffs, a hood, and a kangaroo pouch from a different hoodie that was like a kind of tealy blue which would have matched very nicely. However, when I was doing all this and I found the wear spots and the holes and the whatever, I figured this will still potentially be a nice garment for me to wear. It'll be comfortable. I can just, you know, schlub around the house. Or I might do like some embroidery on the little holes and then that would, you know, zhuzh it up a little bit and make it a little fancier. So it might still be okay to wear as clothes, you know, outside. But I've decided that this garment is like garbage enough that I didn't want to harvest pieces from a shirt that had absolutely nothing wrong with it and that would be rendered completely useless for the purposes of this. I removed the cuff from the original sleeve and made it smaller. I took about that much off. Then I cut off the hem that had been on the pants and then this was pretty simple and yet not at all <laughs> not at all easy. Basically to maintain the stretch because this fabric doesn't really stretch and this one does, I pinned the seam to the seam and then halfway point to the other seam and as I sewed I stretched the stretchy part so that when it was done sewing it would snap back and now I've got these gathers instead of pleats. If I pleated then I would only be able to stretch so far the pleat wouldn't move but the gathers they'll stretch so I hope that makes sense. I couldn't film this portion either because Wendy is a really lightweight machine <laughs> and I needed both hands to stretch this out and stabilize her while I was sewing. I say I would have liked to have grown at least one, if not maybe two or three more hands to help me do this better. But yeah, there was no way I was going to be able to set up the machine and sew this and get the camera rigged all up and yeah, that just wasn't happening. So I did that. Woohoo! And then <laughs> because I have the purple on the cuff that matches the purple of the main body of the dress, I thought it would be really cute to use some of the leftover pant fabric and make pockets. So I put two patch pockets. I used a pattern that I drafted a few years ago and cut out four pieces of the leftover pants fabric, two pieces for each pocket that I sewed together like a fluffless cushion, and then sewed on almost all sides to the dress. Obviously you don't want to sew it completely so you can get your hand in there because they're not just a patch, it's also a pocket. I wanted it to be usable. And I have two of them and I thought this was a nice little coordinating ties in the sleeves and yeah. This is another something that um, I've actually kind of already thrift flipped. Way back when I was making my peaches and cream Barbie inspired dress, which I'll link it above and below if you haven't seen that one yet. Super cute dress. Uh, I was using this dress as my, I guess like a guide, not really a pattern, but it was, it was like a guide to figure out how to make the peaches and cream dress and how to make it fit properly. Because I thrifted this dress. It's uh, white, obviously cotton on the outside and has a polyester lining. And the reason I picked this dress is because last year, 
yeah last year i made a vest and i that's in a video i will link that above and below as well if you're interested it's my cloud patterned vest the one that started life attempting to be the walkaway dress the reproduction pattern of which sucks so i gave it new life as a vest absolutely love it but then i didn't really have anything to wear with the vest that i felt comfortable I mean, I, I was wearing it with like shorts and a tank top and that was cute. It, it's nice as just a shirt, but I really wanted, I thought like a dress. I thought like some volume underneath and some volume for the sleeves would be really cute with the vest over top. And I was going for yellow, but trying to find a yellow dress really hard. So when I stumbled across this white one that was the shape i was looking for just the wrong color i figured well i'll dye it the only problem is when this dress arrived it was like four sizes too big <laughs> and i totally forgot to film what it looked like beforehand i started to film how i took it apart and put it together and then i don't know where that footage went but it's gone i lost it somewhere but basically what I did is I removed the sleeves, I went up underneath and took in both the lining and the outer skirt and then reattached the sleeves in a slightly different spot, obviously, because now there was like less dress. So the sleeves had to come in and now the neckline is a little bit smaller, which is pretty much how I fixed my peaches and cream Barbie dress video linked above and below because <laughs> that was also after I made that dress I found that it was too big um, but now this one fits it fits much nicer now I also took in the elastic on the sleeves it was way too baggy now it hugs my arm nicely and I can pull the sleeves up and have a really poofy sleeve. I have sleeves that could drive Marilla Cuthbert nuts now. I'm gonna have to go through the door sideways. <laughs> Poof sleeves. I love it. My only issue with this dress at this point is when I got the dress, the lining and the dress itself was like at the ideal length. They, they, were, they were both equal, they were matched. And then when I took the sleeves off, somehow i gained like a half an inch of lining all the way around i don't know where it came from i didn't do anything i just took the sleeves off and when i went to put the sleeves back on i was very frugal with the amount of cotton dress that i turned in not so much with the amount of lining that i folded in and yet somehow like i folded more of the lining up around here when i sewed it all back together and yet somehow I still have like all the way around. I, I don't know, I would guesstimate about a half inch to an inch of lining hanging out the bottom of the dress. And I cannot for the life of me figure out where this extra fabric, where did it come from? I don't know. I don't get it. But what I've decided to do for now, because the dress itself is cotton it should take the dye. This is what we're going to be working with. A nice lemon yellow. And once again, this is the all purpose uh, for cotton, wool, etc. So this should dye the cotton without issue. The polyester underdress, I'm not 100% sure. That may or may not take, don't know. But what I'm thinking is I'm just going to throw the whole thing in as is and just dye the whole thing and see if when it's done that little bit of white at the bottom looks cute then I'll leave it if it looks tacky like a slip showing under a dress and I end up not liking that look then I'll end up fixing it not sure how exactly but I'll, I'll deal with that after first we're gonna dye it and I have also decided last minute, now this dress 
would quite easily fit into my dye pot. But I enjoyed dyeing the purple clothes in the washing machine so much that I think I'm going to do it again and just toss this in the washing machine and dye it that way. Um, because this isn't as much fabric though, I decided I'm going to need something else to go in with this load. So what I've decided is I'm also throwing in this dress. This dress I made a couple of years ago, I think. And <laughs> it had a hole. Okay, so this started life as a white eyelet lace dress. So it's, well, the sleeves aren't lined, but the body of the dress is lined. So the problem with this dress is because it was white, I thought it would look really cute to try the ice dye method. I had some uh, powder tie dye and a bunch of ice and it was the summertime when I made this dress and I tried ice dyeing. <laughs> That's more what I was hoping for. As you can see on this, kind of, there's like some green and there's like dark blue. I was hoping for like a watery mermaidy. Everything here, the lining, the lace, the pockets, it's all cotton. This is the pockets are a slightly heavier weight broadcloth. The skirt lining is a little bit of a lighter weight broadcloth. And then the lace is about the same weight, I think, as the lining. The pockets, that's the only thing that took the tie dye. That's, that's the only place where any kind of differentiation of color can be seen. Everything else just basically ended up, oh, and you can see it a little bit, I guess there's a little bit of modeling, but it's basically blue. The green is gone, the dark blue is, I don't know where they went, but it basically just ended up being blue, which is fine, I just, I don't love blue. So I think I'm gonna throw this in with the white dress and see if I can force a little bit more green into it by adding yellow. I don't know if that's gonna work or if I'm gonna completely destroy this dress, but you know what? I don't really wear it when it's this color anyway. I, I just, I don't love the color. These are both going in with this. And we'll see what happens. Quick run through of the dye process with the yellow garments, because it's essentially the same as what I did with the purple garments. Okay, so I threw the items in the wash. This time I forgot to pre rinse those dresses. So they went in dry. Um, I didn't realize it until I had started the load, but there we go. Shook the dye up again and it went into the soap dispenser. And then once again, when I put the hot water in after the dye, I put it in the, the container first to rinse out as much of the color as possible from the dye bottle. A little shake to release the color from the sides. And then that goes into the soap dispenser as well. And also the rest of the hot water. It's like 950 mils, but there we go. Then you just hit start and cross your fingers. <laughs> 10 minutes later, I go back with the salt. Uh, this time I pre-dissolved the salt because it took that 10 minutes to get it ready. You pour the hot salted water in the soap dispenser while the machine is going. You can kind of see in the window that things are starting to happen. Here's the finished robe. I love it. It still feels soft. I haven't used it yet, so I don't know if it's going to be as absorbent as it was before I dyed it. However, it still feels just like it did when it was white. So I'm pretty sure this is going to be perfect. I realized after I finished this that I I didn't dye, it comes with a, a belt. I didn't dye the belt because I don't typically wash the belt 
since it doesn't really get dirty and it's always getting caught in the washing machine and the dryer so it's just it's a headache so i'm going to end up having a white belt with my purple robe but the belt still looks white so that's that's okay it wasn't nearly as dingy as the rest of the robe so that's fine i'm very very happy with how this turned out dying in the washing machine was so unbelievably easy i did not expect it to go so well and it went so well so <laughs> and here's the finished dress i'm kind of surprised at how much i love this i really am i didn't think i was gonna love it as much it was a far bigger headache taking the sleeves off even putting the sleeves on it's still a little from where this fabric stretched out it, it's a little bubbly i don't even care it's super comfortable this is so comfortable oh i love it the sleeves i can push them up and get them out of the way when i need to like wash my hands or do the dishes or pick up dog do or whatever i need to do but then they go down and they're not too tight they're nice and floaty and super soft and I love the pockets so I'll be able to um, when I wear this I can you know have my phone pop my phone in while I'm walking around the house and I don't have to worry about misplacing it I can just I can put my hands in and it's nice and comfy if I'm like waiting for something I don't know but I like it and I think that's really really cute to have the pockets and the sleeves now match and how the cuffs yeah the kangaroo pouch and the hood and everything that that would have looked cute but i really like this i really like this and <laughs> i still have the sleeves left over i may or may not use these for something i i don't know but all i have left from the pants are the cuffs and this <laughs> this is it <laughs> that's all <laughs> that's all that's left so yeah i think that was a good use of fabric <laughs> okay now for the yellow items let's see how they turned out i don't think you're ready for this i wasn't ready for this <laughs> wow this is a lot brighter than i was expecting i kind of love it though <laughs> this actually okay um that's gonna need to be addressed the bottom i don't have time to do that before i need to post this video so that's gonna be a done after thing um but yeah the as I suspected, the polyester lining, it kind of took the, the color. It does look a little yellow, but now that looks like a dingy stained slip underneath a really cute dress. So I'm gonna have to, I'm not sure yet. I'm either gonna take up the hem, so I still have the slip underneath. I do think I like the feel of that. My other option was now that the dress has color, it might not be as see-through as when it was white. So I could potentially just remove the lining altogether. But I do kind of like the feeling of the lining. Yeah, I think I might have it. But I'm going to do that later. The sleeves fit beautifully. Ah, oh, I love it. Giant puffed sleeves. The elastic fits much more comfortably now. And for those who forgot, or don't know this is the whole reason that I went and dyed this dress because of the little moons that's a little more root and tootin than I was expecting I might need to get some cowboy boots <laughs> I like it though I like that 
the flounce of the skirt and the poof of the sleeves. I think it balances the tight fit of the vest quite nicely and I like this little peak of yellow at the neckline. I don't think this is my usual style. This is not something that I would gravitate towards under usual circumstances, but I think I love it. My only issue is now I don't have pockets. Probably should have thought about that when I was opening the side seams. Oh well. <laughs> For now, I really like it. This was another surprise. I don't know how I feel about it. But first off, I do want to show you something, which I thought was kind of funny. Okay, so this is, you know, this is the lace, okay? The lining, so the lace is like this nice, like a, a pale minty, the lining, that's like a swampy lime green. And then the pockets are, are like a neon acid green. What? Wait. They're all, at least I think this one's cotton. I know these two are cotton. They're just a slightly different weight. My goodness. That's how the dye took to the three slightly different. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. I think I really like it though. I definitely like it better than the blue. I was kind of hoping for a dark color, especially after that yellow one came out like blindingly bright. I was expecting a little bit more color with this dress. But I guess, I mean, any kind of color. I wasn't sure because I used Tulip brand tie-dye first and then Rit brand dye. And they're both intended for clothing, so you figure they would work, but I wasn't sure if they'd be compatible with each other, being two different, um, intended for two different dye methods and being from two different companies. So the fact that the blue and the yellow actually mingled to create something else, that's pretty awesome. I was hoping it would happen. But I'm gonna have to try this dress again in the summer. I think maybe the reason I don't love it right now is because I'm still in my like dark jewel tones, black, winter, cold weather outfit frame of mind. And this pale green just, eh. But I think it's gonna be really, really nice in the summer when I'm into, you know, more brighter, paler, summery or colors. I think this is gonna look really nice in the spring and summer. I just, I don't think I'm jiving with it right now because it's just, it's too pale for my current seasonal aesthetic and mood. But yeah, I think I really like it. The lace is like the slightest, tiniest, palest bit green, but not like in a dirty way. I still really like it. It looks white enough to be white lace, but it's just a little bit green to sort of cohesively blend with all the other greens. I think that turns out really good. And actually, now that I've got this dress on, I haven't worn it since, I don't remember if I wore it at all last summer, to be honest. So it might have been like a year and a half since I've worn this dress. And now that I've got it on, it's more comfortable than I remember. So, yeah, and it's got pockets. <laughs> so now that I don't hate the color, I think I'm definitely going to wear this dress more often. Fabric dye <laughs> can do wonders for giving clothes new life and extending um, the wear of things that we already have. So if you've got things in your closet that you're kind of tired of, but it still fits, consider changing the color. And um, yeah, that alone can be enough to re-excite you to wear whatever it is that you've lost interest in. Changing up the sleeves, adding pockets, that's, you know, some other great um, simple-ish options to go with as well. So in terms of the things that I have flipped, the dress, I love it. I haven't worn it yet, 
but I have found some leggings that will go with it. So I have a complete outfit and yeah, I think later this week I'm going to be pulling this out and giving it a try, but I love the colors. I love how the purple turned out. I love how the sleeves and the pockets, this gorgeous tartan, I love how it gives a nice contrast. It really changes up the look. The sleeves are now much more comfortable. So I'm looking forward to wearing this one. The robe, I have already used it as my wearable towel and chef's kiss, it's perfect. It's just as absorbent as it was when it was dingy white, only now it's that gorgeous purple color. And yeah, there's not much else to say. It's perfect. I'm gonna continue to use that robe probably until it falls apart or I die, whichever comes first. <laughs> yellow dress, surprise hit. I was not expecting this bright of a yellow, but I love it. I was not expecting that this and the vest would have such, uh, you know, country and western yeehaw vibes, but you know what? I'm down for that too. I'm going to fix up the bottom. After wearing it a little bit longer, I'm thinking that maybe it's a little short. So I might end up putting um, another little ruffle at the bottom. I have some really pretty yellow gingham that I thrifted not too long ago. If it's a similar shade, if it coordinates nicely, I might put a ruffle of gingham at the bottom or I might find some white lace. But otherwise, I love it. And this was another surprise. I was not expecting it to come out three different colors, but I kind of love it, I think. Um, as I said, I'm gonna have to give it a chance in the summer when I'm in a more muted, um, you know, bright colors, pastels, that kind of thing. When I'm in that mood, I may like it even more. But for now, I'm satisfied with the change. So, yeah, thrift flips this month were an overwhelming success. I am happy with everything and how it turned out. I hope that uh, maybe this inspired you to take uh, another look at pieces in your wardrobe that you might be getting sick of and consider new ways to wear it, things that you can do to refresh it. Um, you know, to keep it a little bit longer, especially if it fits, if it's something that you used to love. Maybe you can love it again. I will see you in the next video next month for a merch miniature madness. <laughs> this month has not been a good month. We may talk about that in the next video too. We'll see. <laughs> I'll see you in the next video, lovelies. Until then, stay fabulous, stay safe, and know that you're loved. Bye.